Okay, I probably shouldn't be doing this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, in the previous quick tip, I had mentioned the fact that I'm going to put some moonbeams over top of Akari here. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how I would do that. It's kind of slick how it works, and it's a good example of uh, dealing with effects in post-production in open tunes. So first step, um, I probably should just uh, insert, I think it's Alt N, Alt N inserts a level. Okay, and I'm going to insert a tunes vector level. Okay, now I'm not usually super big on vector levels, but we're going to do a vector level today because all I'm actually going to do here is just add a background uh, and that's just to simplify um, what I'm trying to elucidate in this little quick uh, this isn't really a quick tip this is more of a tutorial okay so I'm gonna draw a rectangle and I am going to fill the rectangle okay so I made it black if you wanted to you could push this little button right here and it will crop it to the camera uh, angle or field of view perhaps you should say and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just sort of match this to the tinting that I put on Akari now you might say what tinting on Akari I don't see any tinting well you're right and that's because I don't have preview enabled but if I enable preview you can see that she's tinted thusly. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how I did that. And I sort of touched on it in the last video, but basically all I did was I right mouse clicked on this column and I clicked new effects. And when I clicked new effects, I selected uh be I believe it would be color adjustment. This is super cool. I mean, image under image adjustment I believe I did adjust levels. Is that correct? Yeah, it looks like I did adjust levels. So I'm not going to do it again since it's already in there. If I pull up the schematic, you can see here it is. And then I, I just turned the RGB output down to 132.6. <laughs> I didn't type that in. I actually just dragged this. And then I pushed the uh, low level of the blue output up a bit. And then that sort of tinted it slightly towards the blue. And you get that. So now the question is, what about the moonbeams? Okay, so she's got a plastic tool going on right here, which is how she breathes. Uh, so we probably should turn the preview off so you can see she's breathing. So what we want to do in this case is just put a uh, moonbeams shining in effect over top. So I'm going to hit Alt-N. And I'm going to insert another vector level tunes vector level and you'll see in a minute why I'm choosing to use a vector level um, it just it makes what I'm about to do a kind of stupidly easy okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to this vector level and instead of using the paintbrush I'm actually gonna use the line tool all right so I'm gonna click uh, the G G key for geometric tool and uh, and then just simple line. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, the moon's coming from here, so I'm just going to go put a line there. And you can see this line's pretty dark, so let's go ahead and make it white. All right. And we're just going to add these moonbeams. Now, the reason, um, and I'm going to do, by the way, parenthetically, I'm going to do some more experiments with the vector tool. I'm, I haven't been super big on the vector tool for reasons I won't get into, but um, I'm curious how sketching will go with the vector tool. Because the, the one advantage that it gives you over the other types of levels, uh, I said vector tool, I meant vector levels, is that uh, it has an infinite canvas baked in. You automatically get an infinite canvas when you work with tunes vector levels. I'm kind of, you know, got a little dubious feeling towards whether that's going to be a win because using raster levels for sketching is very, very um, 
tactile and interactive. I don't think the vector tool is going to be as good. But anyway, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this little tool right here called the pump tool. And I'm going to crank the size as up as high as I can go. Now watch what happens if I go down to the end of this vector. Look at that. Nice. So I'm just going to pump that up. Pump it up. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this level. And I'm also going to add a new effect to this level. And because I'm doing it here at the X sheet, it's going to be really easy for me to find this level. Um, in the schematic. So let's give that a crack. Uh, I gotta go Windows. I apparently I closed my schematic view. Okay, and there's the blur I just inserted. So that's great. So this must be the vector column I just added. And you can see this yellow one right here since it is also yellow. And I only have two vector levels in the uh, project. I don't actually have to think too hard. <laughs> Okay, so now I'm going to take this and I'm going to blur this. Who knows? What do you think? Um, actually, I, sh I should probably move the schematic out of the way and look at what the default is. Um, you know, not horrible, but not great. I'm going to say, let's just double that. Let's do 20 millimeters. See, see what it looks like. Yeah, that's better. I think that's better. Okay, now here's the part... Frankly, to tell you the truth, you could you could just leave it at, leave it at this. I think I'm going to do one more thing. Because of the way this is looking, it's leading me to think that I would probably also benefit from adding a circle here like that. And let's fill that with white as well. I'll bet you that's going to look even better. Mm, kind of sort of but not really. Okay. Um, lesson learned. I'm going to actually sneak that all the way back to there. And then I'm going to make the blur even a little bigger. It's almost suggesting to me that maybe it would be better to have this spread over two different levels. So I can have different blur effects for each. But yeah, because I definitely um, don't like the effect I'm getting. I just want to see a little bit of that kissing off the top. Now that's kind of okay. The main problem is that the um, I'm losing too much here. So what I'm going to do actually, I guess the simpler solution I should have thought of at first is to just make this a little more aggressive. Okay, so I didn't really want to belabor that. The next thing I wanted to talk about, though, was um, how the moonbeams are going to combine with the level below it. And the way we're going to do that is in the schematic. So basically, what we want to do is we know this is Akari, and we know this is the moonbeams. Um, her color correction needs to come first, and this blur needs to come first. And then what I wanted to do was I wanted to insert an effect and it's going to be layer blending INO which I don't know what that means maybe in and out or something but what we want is overlay mode okay the moonbeams are going to be in the foreground and Akari is going to be in the background okay so this probably because of the way the moonbeams were looking it's not going to really change it too much but um, not bad actually, not bad. So you can see what the overlay mode does. The overlay is a lot like, if you've used Photoshop, it's a lot like soft light. Um, what's kind of interesting here is it almost leads me to think, I'm just curious about this, what would happen if we included, put the blur in in overlay mode, but also include it by itself yeah and then what I would want to do okay I keep moving the schematic back and forth so you can see it I'm thinking then what I want to do is 
and I'm totally uh, giving this a crack as I, I go here. I'm sort of um, seeing if it's going to work. What do I want to do? Um, I'm not sure. Let's just do adjust levels. Let's just do adjust levels. Okay, and let me go ahead and get this out of the way again. And then what we're going to do is... Uh, I'm going to turn down the RGB output altogether. Okay, that's good. That's what I wanted. So now I get the nice glow from the overlay effect, but if I want the m visible moonbeams in there, I can just turn them up a little bit. Not too shabby. And what's kind of interesting about that is that if you wanted to, if you look at this here, think about it, we could also uh, overly blur the, um, you know, we've got the overlay version that's pre-blurred, but what we could do is add another blur to the back end of this one right here. So let's, let's do that. Let's insert another blur, and we'll crank this one up to... We'll do 20 on this one just for kicks and giggles. And let's turn this off and on. So this is really a good way uh, to help you understand uh, how uh, effects work in Blender. Or in Blender, in OpenTune. I've been using Blender a lot lately too. And now it would not be a bad idea in this case for me to take these four levels and collapse them. And I don't know if that's on the file menu. I think it's on the file menu. Let me see here. I would, the commonsensical thing would be to just right mouse click on the columns. Um, well, let's give that a try. I was I was getting mixed results earlier. Like now I right mouse click. Okay. Yeah, and for some reason earlier it seemed like the columns were being in select unselected, but okay, so I can hit collapse, include relevant columns. So now what I've done is I've taken Akari's whole first first shot and collapsed it into a single column, which just makes the X sheet uh a little clearer to navigate. And then if I wanted to do some more work on this particular uh, shot, all I've got to do is open the sub X sheet and then I, I get a new X sheet that only has those levels. Okay, and I'm going to close the sub X sheet and go back to here. Again, that's what it looks like with both overlay mode and all the schematic shenanigans I was up to a minute ago. And I would say that for a Open Tunes quick tip, uh, that'll do it. Till next time.